Thanks for the invitation from Kevin Miller for inviting me to appear before the Rotary Club. And Kay Crouch had invited me some months ago. And I told Kay that I had stage fright, but I'd go through with it. But the closer I got to that set date, the more nervous I got. So I finally canceled out. My interest in photography started when I was young. And most people, most kids are interested in photography at one point in their life. And my interest was really no more than average. But when I started to get into photography, I bought a Canon AE-1 camera, film camera. And that did such a wonderful job. And I started doing photos of my family and my grandkids and cars I was working on. And later, I really got serious about it when I started restoring photos that my dad had when he was mayor. And a lot of those photos were given to me by Ralph Hagler, who used to work for the city. And so I restored those old photos, and I restored all the photos I had of my family from years ago. And that led into... Uh, a serious interest in restoring photos. So I did that for a while and uh, I started posting those photos on Facebook. I thought what the heck since I'm restoring them I might as well post them on Facebook and when I did people were so excited to see those old photos of the city that I continued to do it and it just grew and grew. Well the first Facebook page that I used, and I say used because it didn't belong to me, was uh, Caldwell County Now and Then. And later, because I wanted to link that Facebook page to our Caldwell Heritage Museum, I decided to start my own page and change the name to Lenore and Caldwell County History. So, that really took off. The more I posted, the more that grew. Uh, especially when I talked about uh, the restoration of the center theater photos. A lot of people misunderstood what I said when I said that I was restoring the center theater photos and they thought I was restoring the center theater. And believe it or not, that caused such an increase in interest that at that time, uh, the Facebook page had as many as 50,000 people a week. So there was a lot of love and a lot of interest about the Center Theater. When my grandkids were born, I continued to do photography, of course, and, and the restoration too. But I also got into video more. And uh, I bought the Adobe Premiere Elements and Photoshop. To do photos and video and I started making monthly videos of my grandkids and I did that for 10 years. I was asked to be a board member at our Caldwell Heritage Museum which was such a great honor as is uh, this presentation for you and of course I accepted and when I did join uh, I started doing videos of the uh, Coffee with the Curator that we have on Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock. And so I've been doing that I guess about three years and I don't think I've missed a one that I can remember. And I really enjoyed that. I learned a lot about our history. And I learn every day just as you do if you follow what I do. And I do appreciate the so many people that follow what I do, take interest in what I do. And this is just my way of giving back to the community, trying to save as much of our history as I can. I did videos of cruise ends and musical events here in Caldwell County, and that got to be really too much and was taking too much time away from my history, and that's what I love the best. Now the reason that I love history so much, and the only way I can explain it, 
is that my dad owned Lenore Drugstore, and he owned it, I guess, for 50 years or more. And I spent so much time in that drugstore. It was like I grew up uptown. I lived only two blocks away, so I could walk uptown. And so I spent so much time at the City Pool, at the Center Theater, at Lenore Drugstore. And back then, Lenore was such a wonderful place to, to be. Uh, and back then, it was such a wonderful time to live in. If you are old enough to know what it was like to live in the 50s, it just didn't really get any better than that. You didn't lock your doors. There was no major crime at all. It was a very safe place for a child to be. I could walk up to the Center Theater when I was 10 for the Late Show and not fear anything. But times have changed, and I guess I really enjoy looking back more than I do looking forward. Now, the 50s were great times, of course, with the exception of civil rights, and we all understand that. What I have done as of 2018, I have collected about 13,000 restored photos. Now, they're not all completely restored because that takes way too much time, and I would never get these old photos posted. But some of the collections that I have done, Cecil Haley's negative collection. It was unknown for a while where those negatives came from when they were given to me by the museum because they couldn't do anything with them. Well, come to find out, actually, they belonged to uh, Becky Haley, and she had given them to the museum. And I believe that was a thousand and forty negatives that I converted. And there were some wonderful photos in that collection. Uh, some of the best were of the 1941 centennial celebration in downtown Lenore. And uh, another collection that was recently given to me was the Lynn Bernhardt collection, given to me by Lynn Bernhardt Jr. I had no idea that Lynn Bernhardt was such a good photographer and such a well-known photographer. Uh, I have about 3,000 photos, negatives, that I have to convert to photos and restore. These negatives are so well preserved, Lynn had put them in individual envelopes and covered each negative with a piece of black paper. And other than a slight yellowing from the age, they look like they were taken yesterday. And so I've just started on Lynn's collection and some fantastic photos in that as well. Uh, Lynn took a lot of portrait photos of people that were really well known. And one that comes to mind that he took so many of was Dr. Clyde Hedrick's family of his daughter's weddings. Excellent photo. And another collection that was given to me, it was given to the museum and then to me, negatives from Jim Clark. Now, Jim Clark used to be a photographer for the Lenore News Topic, as many of you know. And Jim was an excellent photographer, too. So many uh, photos that he took of businesses uptown when they would have a special for the News Topic like a family would go from business to business. You've seen how that's done. And Jim did a lot of that. He also did a lot of ball games and race tracks. But what I enjoy most about what Jim has done is aerial photos. He has some aerial photos that I have never seen before. And really great photos of uh, Smith Crossroads when it was a circle, for example. Um, but his photos don't go back any further. I think the oldest photos I have right now that Jim Clark took was like 1970. But I have another collection, a much smaller collection by John Houston. Now John Houston, John Barr Houston, was in the Lenore Camera Club in the 40s, along with Mac Dool and several other people. And his collection has provided some of the oldest photos going back into the uh, 
30s, some of them go back to the 30s. Melba Burgess Stapleton is another collection. She was an amateur photographer and her husband owned a photography business beside the Kentwood Grill. And in that collection there's so many of old downtown Lenore of parades and people that have passed over. Wonderful collection. Some of the videos that I am most proud of is the history of the Bluebell and that is a two-part video and I had so many hours in that. I believe to restore all the photos involved was something like 300 hours and so many projects I have done like the old Lenore hardware and the Bluebell I couldn't have done that without Dinell Clark. Dinell owns both properties. Now one thing very exciting that I did, or at least exciting to me, maybe not to you, was to get on a ladder, which I'm too old to be doing, to get on a ladder and video and photo the old water tank in the Bluebell Tower, which had never been done before and very few people, if any, have ever even seen that. But I was a little nervous going up that ladder and doing that. Uh, my son was going to do it first, and he got halfway up the ladder and said, Dad, I can't do this. And I said, well, you know, that's okay. I don't like heights either, but it meant so much to me to complete that project. And to complete it, I needed to video that 10,000-gallon water tank. Huge water tank. And another thing I did at Bluebell when making the Bluebell history video was to climb in the clean out area of the 100 foot chimney, lay on my back and take some photos and videos up the chimney, which I'm sure nobody's ever been foolish enough to do that, but my son and I both did that. And so that was a real experience. One thing I want to mention, I couldn't do all this on Facebook without help. My good friend, the Reverend Gary James, who I used to work with at Smith Crossroads Ford, he was assistant service manager. Gary knows so much about Valmede, and he knows so much about downtown Lenore and the people, and especially the State Theater where he worked. I kid Gary because I call him the mayor of Valmede. That's where he grew up. Phyllis Hedrick Miller also contributes a lot to my Facebook page. She is so good at remembering the old days, the, the names and the places. And uh, she's also, along with Neil Isaac, they both are excellent Lenore High School band historians. My friend Bruce Craig has contributed a lot. One of the best photos I've ever found, and found it recently, was one of the oldest known photos of Smithy's department store. And at first it was hard to identify because, of course, it was old gray rock, but the sun was shining on it in such a way that it, it looked like it was a light colored stone, um, almost like uh, stucco. But that was identified, and what threw me was it was such an old photo that uh, the street that ran by it, which I believe is, uh, that would be Boundary Street, was tree-lined in front of the old Blackwelder Hospital. It was all a tree-lined street, and that really threw me. That would be where the old Kit Carson service station was uptown, if you remember Kit. One of the most liked photos I have ever posted on Facebook, and still yet continues to be, Every Christmas I post Dave Rufty's photo of downtown Lenore. It's in color. It's a time exposure photo. And that has gotten more likes, more praise, than any photo I have ever posted. Another photo I'd like to mention is just recently, in the last week, I found a photo of the old Ames department store. And you may, if you're old enough, remember where that was. That's where Belks is now. And another photo I found some time ago in the old uh, Cecil Haley collection was a photo of O.P. Lutz. 
O.P. Lutz did not have very many photos taken of him, evidently, because the ones I have, I've never seen any more. I've also done a video about the history of Lenore Drugstore, the history of Lenore Hardware and Furniture Company, the history of theaters here in Caldwell County. One video I'm working on now, and have been working on for some time, is the history of the Fairfield Cemetery, and my historian friend Bruce Craig and I have been working on that project and hope to finish that up in the spring. I have also completed the history of the Hinkle Opera. Now, the Hinkle Opera House used to be where W.E. Shaw Furniture Company is, and in the basement they had stables and a carriage shop where they built carriages. And so I've gone throughout that whole building with uh, the owner, Sean Williams, and my friend Bruce Craig, and we've videoed and photoed that entire building. And that has been completed, and there may be a part three to come. What I enjoy most is seeing the inside of these old buildings. To grow up uptown, for example, right beside Lenore Hardware and Furniture Company, and never have seen the upstairs and the basement and the furnace room. All this is just fascinating to me to be that close to it every day as a kid, but never have seen it. And the same is true about the uh, old Courtney warehouse that uh, was behind Courtney's and later Spain Hours. That building still exists. It's attached to the rear of that building on Church Street. Now, I went up in that building too, and as a child I used to play in that alley right beside it at Lenore Drugstore, and to be that close and never have seen the upstairs, and to go upstairs in that building and look through these old windows and think about how many people have looked through those windows before, it's very emotional. Uh, you can tell this old glass by, it's, it's very wavy. And that was true of the old Lenore Hardware building, too. Wavy glass. And to stand in that corner window and look out at the monument and think about how many people have looked out that window before. I'm going to tell one experience I had, and it's going to make people raise their eyebrows a little bit. But since I've been restoring photos of these people that have passed over and the businesses I have been in that were so old, and the people that used to run it. You know, I feel like they guide me in what I do. Uh, all this that I do, the photography, the videos, and all this that led up to uh, Lenore and Caldwell County history and me being on the uh, board of directors at our museum, I don't feel like it just uh, happened by chance. I believe I was destined to do this, really, guided to do this, if you will. Several times I've seen signs that I'm doing what God wants me to do. And I'll give you an example. I have a security light on the front of my home, and it's a uh, motion detector floodlight. And that floodlight never comes on for no reason. Wind will set it off. An animal will set it off, but it never goes off on its own. So one night I was, uh, I must have been having trouble with a video or something and, and really got discouraged. And I couldn't sleep and it was, oh, 12 or 1 o'clock. And I came in here in the living room where I'm making this video now. And I stood in front of the window looking out at the street and everything was quiet, there were no animals, no cars. And I said, Lord, please give me a sign if I'm doing what you want me to do. And as soon as I finished that sentence, immediately, that floodlight came on. Now, I've had several things like that happen. If you look for signs, you'll see them in what you do. If you pray for them, you'll see them. I would have never believed that when I was young. 
but I do really appreciate the opportunity to tell my story because so many have asked, how did you get started in this? How did it all come about? Well, like I say, it was by accident. It just happened. I didn't do anything to make it happen. Everything just fell into place and continues to fall into place. That led to uh, my receiving the Love and Lenore Award last year in 2017 and I was so honored and so appreciative of that. Now my father was mayor from 1937 through 1961. My mother was a teacher. She went to Davenport College. I went to Davenport. My kids went to Davenport. So there's a real connection there too with our museum being in the old auditorium that we used at Davenport Junior High where on rainy days Coach Jack Pennell would have P.E. in that what is now our museum. But my mother and father had no problem at all getting in front of people. In fact my dad enjoyed being in front of people as mayor and my mother taught a class, a shorthand class in the basement of our house at uh, the corner of Norwood and Penton. But I have a tremendous fear. I have stage fright so severe that it's almost like a panic attack. And my two older sisters are the same. Why that is, I don't know. I do know the more you do it, the less stage fright you have. But uh, I'm not so sure about that. But it was great to speak to you today, and I hope you enjoy my little story of how all this came about. One other video that I really enjoyed doing, and I did it with my friend, new friend, Wayne Bean, who is a historian and has a tremendous collection of old church photos and school photos. And Wayne and I have had sessions together where I photographed every photo he had. And so that led into us doing a video up in Edgemont, and Mortimer. We followed the train tracks from Lenore up through Cottsville on into Edgemont and Mortimer and we did that whole area and we videoed the historic places and if you've never seen that video I think you should see it. Now in order to see my videos I have done this so long really all you have to do is Google Bill Tate and that'll take you to everything I do. I have over a hundred, I've lost count. I think it's over a hundred history videos on YouTube now. And many of them have played on uh, our TV channel that just closed, uh, Dean Norman, um, WTBL. And hopefully they're going to be played on uh, our local Caldwell County Channel now. Soon, I hope. But my videos continue. I really enjoy doing this, especially when it's something very historical. One thing I found of real interest to me was I grew up on the corner of Norwood and Penton. That was our new house that we built in 1949. And my view out my bedroom window was the perfect, uncluttered view of High Brighton Mountain. And what I did not know is, and maybe you didn't either, that back in, in the 1900s, early 1900s, there was a dance pavilion on top of High Brighton Mountain. And I have some photos of that. That's just phenomenal. I have a great collection of photos of when the monument was built here in Lenore in 1910 and later when it was moved. Several photos of that too. Jack Taylor moving it. But those are some of the oldest and best photos I have. The moving of the monument. The building of the monument. I have a photo of the Dixie Home Fire which is very rare. I recently found that and I've forgotten whose collection it was in. I think it may have been in Lynn Bernhardt's collection. I'm not sure. My short-term memory is terrible. 
but my long term is crystal clear. But the Dixie home burnt down. It was beside O.P. Luke's Furniture Company across from the old post office. And I was fortunate enough to see that fire because I was good friends with Steve Strick and we were about, I think we were about 10 years old. His father, George Strick, had heard about the fire and took us uptown to watch it. And I later found out that my historian friend Bruce Craig was watching that fire from the post office steps and Phyllis Hedrick, the daughter of Dr. Clyde Hedrick, was watching it burn as well. Thanks again for the opportunity to make this video for the Rotary.